Hello YouTube, this is Vacuum Man 8 today. Carl's quietly eating some toast. Just come home from school today. So today we're just going to um, do quite a quite in, well, a different sort of video really for uh, the Vacuum Man 8 because we've actually, well, I do believe I've got a cursed vacuum because there's been lots of strange things going on on this on this project. So the story started last year when. Um, I went in, you know, after one of the shaken vac uh, vacuums from the 1980s. Uh, this particular who was seen here um, was, well, it's, very, it's not common, but it's trying to find a nice one. So that's what we did, what I tried to do. So this one turned up, well, the original one turned up on eBay. It was a cursed, cursed project from the start because. The, the person that um, I bought it off never packaged it properly and they had bought, bought the clip on it which was the most hardest part um, to actually replace it on. Yeah, so basically the thing that went missing, well, the thing that was broken was this clip here. Um, to do this on the original machine was such a quite a difficult job. Plus as well, once I washed the bag, which look, here is the bag um, after I've cleaned it. Um, very similar to the original one, but you can still see the marks. So, so, well, the best thing to do now is to try and just find a replacement machine to um, see if we can um, get a better one. So, that's when the strange things start to happen. Um, very, very strange. It's just a bit weird. I mean, I did mention on the uh, Vintage Week last week that yeah, it's been a bit of a weird week, and it was. Um, so, what I did, um, I think it was about five weeks ago, I managed to um, acquire, get the old fishing rod out and fish out for a replacement one. And a fairly nice one turned up on Spock. So I decided to um, ask the seller to, um, to actually send it to me, which they did, which was all good. And this is when the weird things started happening. So here is a picture of it and um, as you can see it's not in too bad condition but when you look at where it's where it is it was all on its own it was like an, in a room there was nothing at all in the room it was almost like a derelict um, like room or something which is a bit weird looking but I thought yeah we'll go, just go for it you know I only need a few parts of it um, it was part not working as well but I mean the amount of ones we bought over the time that said parts not working you put a plug on it it's fine you know so turns up and then it looked like this and you may think well where is the video well another strange thing when we opened the box the box was about five foot five and a half foot tall Like it had been wrapped, almost mummified sort of style of packaging. You know, you'd think it was like come out of the Egyptian tomb the way it was um, come out. It was very, very strange. I was amazed it actually um, was all right inside. So then I uploaded the video. So we shot the video, uploaded it, um, did it the, the, the same week as I did the vintage week. Um, the dirt, dirt searcher conclusion and then for some unknown reason and I mean and I only checked it last week well last week I decided oh, just before the vintage week I'll upload the new one because this one's practically getting done now so what I normally do is I'll, I'll upload the first look of the other one that one mysteriously went wrong um, mysteriously disappeared off Google um, I've had a few problems with Google, but it's a bit, a bit of a strange. I've never ever lost a video on Google on um, on YouTube ever. And then, as well, it's also filmed on a phone, which I have memory, and that was still what should have been on there, and that mysteriously disappeared. And then it's edited on an iPad Pro, 
and that's got 256 gig. So generally, I will stick it in the the, the delete basket, but it takes four weeks or over four weeks to actually delete it off the, the device. And that had mysteriously got cleared as well. So it's a bit of a strange effect. So then, um, last weekend, I decided to have a look at this thing. Oh, we've already washed the bag up, all looking good. And then I said to Carl, right, it says it's parts not all yet. And when we got the thing, get back to that. The handle, where the handle was, as you can imagine the neck of the vacuum, that had a lot of damage inside. So that was unusable, which meant that I still would have had to do this repair. It was so wobbly on the video. It's a shame you couldn't see it. You could not use the thing. So that was another downer, and as well, mysteriously, the, the plug, it had a nice brown wire on it, which they're quite hard, these proper coloured wires, and that one then mysteriously being cut right down to nothing, so then I had to get another cable and wire it back in. So when I tried it, I put a 5 amp fuse in it, I think because it was only a single speed motor, I thought, well, probably the 5 amp, because it's only 440 watts, I think to 600 a 5 amp should do it because that's I think that's what the senior the Hoover senior um, 652 deluxe um, takes so put the thing on put like a belt on it the belt I had hanging around the house was quite a slack one didn't want to put too much wear on it it was working fine then then I had a burning smell it was like a, a rubber burning smell so then I thought, right, well what we'll do now is, I will then put the correct belt in. So I did, so I put a better belt in it, I think I put a brand new one, I think it was a Qualitex one, but it was an old, a new old stock belt, it was a, probably as good quality as the original Hoover belts you used to buy back in the 70s, 80s and 90s, you know. So that happened then, and then I was vacuuming the floor and it was running lovely and I thought, oh my dear, this is going to be an easy job, this one. And then what happens? The vacuum cut out, didn't it mate? The vacuum actually cut out and I thought, oh, okay, I've only got a 5 amp fuse in there. So then I went in and checked some of the older senior, um, the 70s senior instructions. And I thought, what? Oh, 13 amp it says on that one, so I put 13 amp fuse in it. Got loads of them because always the wrong fuse in them. And then, well, then what happened, mate? The power went off, didn't it? I actually short the house out, the actual house circuit with all the electric. I shorted out it, so I thought, hmm, this is not good. So you know, the video went, you know. So I thought, oh dear, I'm gonna have to use the other one now. I mean, at the end of the day, the amount of bits that I took off it was quite minimal really, which was quite bad. I was hoping just to give it a quick little, you know, a quick little detail and a rebuild and it was all ready, but it, it was a big job in the end. It was a two, I had to strip both of them down, clean all the parts and use just the best parts on one machine. So we have got the, video, the vacuum in here. And um, what was the other thing that went wrong with it? It was a bit weird. Oh yeah, normally, um, as well, I do a quite a big detail, I actually thoroughly, thoroughly clean um, the, the, the Hoover electric motors, I am quite, I'm not obsessed with it, but I, I use various products to clean the bearings, like I could, if I did a video of, of a motor, it would, it would probably take about three days, because that's how long I spend on re-lubricating the motors in stages and cleaning them all out. So what I normally do is I use my favourite um, spray, which is this. This is the stuff I normally use to um, clean the electric motors out with, because electric, because when you look at it, you've got carbon dust in it and all that sort of business, and I just find that this stuff here, it's, it's about seven pound a tin, but it's very, very good. It's, it's an electric contact cleaner. Um, you can get cheaper ones, I mean the cheaper ones probably work as good, but it has got this uh, quite a nice spray on it. I've got, I use a lot of the WD-40 stuff really, I'm quite easy. If he runs out, it's only like a mile down on my butt. My butt. Sure you have a yeah, we don't need to do that. 
So, this spray here, I use this to clean the field coils off and the armature windings. Yeah. So, what I did is I picked up the yellow can, which was this one, opposed to this one, and I sprayed silicone spray all in, all on the field coils and all over the motor and the armature windings, which when you look at it, Look, it looks like what? Yeah, so I used silicone spray, which is like a spray oil, and sprayed the armature with it. So I'd actually run out of this stuff. So I then had to buy some more of this, which is seven pounds. Yeah, there's yeah, all sorts of good stuff. Like. So what I do is I use, I use like a, a degreaser. I use this. I'll use that to to start relubricating the bearings. After I've got all the stuff in it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then I use uh, old-fashioned grease in the end. I actually grease bearings. I don't. I don't like using sprays. I don't. I've found in the past they don't actually penetrate and work as well as old-fashioned grease is the best thing for vintage machines. They're good for cleaning stuff out. You know, quick stuff. They weren't designed for sprays. They were designed for grease guns and stuff. You know. So what we'll do now, we'll get this vacuum out, we'll have a quick little look at this one and then we'll give it a quick little go. So as you can see now, after all the problems, we could use one of these to fix the, water. the machine is looking absolutely fantastic now. And what we'll do at this stage of the video, um, the other machine did have a, a sticker which I've I've detailed this handle, put it back on. The other one, the other handle was better, but the problem is the bottom of it, this hole here was quite big. And even though I swapped that, the, the hand, that's that's where the damage was on the other one, on that bit there, there was some paint marks. So ideally I wanted to change this because of this mark here, but we couldn't. And the machine now has got the correct cable on now. Um, we're just going to give it a quick going around the room. We'll just get the top off this one to show what makes you know how well it's come up. Yeah, so this one's from uh, 1980, I think. The other one was a 1981 version. So let's get the lid off here. So you guys, you can see now. Look, this thing has been completely rebuilt. That was the bit I took off the other one. The other one was a slightly a different colour look. And I thought, well, I'll just use the other one because it was it's actually like this one's gone off colour, like a, bit, a little bit faded. So the motor, this one was working. This is the motor. So basically the chassis is the, it, I basically took off this part here, um, some bits of the brush rolls. I have not even touched the motor. I've not even, I'm actually going to throw the whole, whole motor out. I'm not even going to go anywhere near it because there was an, um, an issue with it. Um, there are some like C clips here. I think there's one there, and I think there's one over there that they're hidden. Um, oh, I actually stripped another one down. There was also a little breakage here. I've tie wrapped it back in, but the other one, but that doesn't matter too much. It goes right through there. There's like a grommet on there. Um, underneath here. So this is from. So this is a shaking vacuum one from 1980, like July 1980. So I'd say, so next next month will be the vacuum's birthday. Um, the brush wheel has been sprayed up. Um, I've just used primer and I've just used matte black paint. I just, I have on some of the other ones used a satin, but it's just too shiny. That's more like what they used to look like back in the day. Um, I haven't put no, um, oh, what they call it, lacquer on it because the lacquer I've got makes it shiny. So even though it's a matte black, I put the lacquer on. So I'm, I'm probably going to look out for a satin, a satin or matte um, lacquer um, just for the brush rolls. So it is, like you say, absolutely mint condition now. Um, the bag, we'll get the bag and show you on the vacuum. I've took off the uh, the ticking time bomb, which goes like here. Oh, it goes like, yeah, it goes like, 
it goes on there. Yeah, I think it, I think it went on there or somewhere. So it goes about there on on it. Actually, it goes like that. Look. So the ticking time bomb goes there. And then what you need to do, you just need to crimp, make extend the wires there to bypass it. Um, that wire was off the original machines. I do like to, if I do strip a machine down, I do like to use the original wires to put onto, because um, the seniors, because the when you take the suppressor out, the, the wires are too short on the junior, you can either take them out or you can shorten them and they fit quite nicely. So what we'll do now, we'll get this one uh, built up and I we'll... Uh, the pressure wires. The suppressor wires cuts them off. So what we'll do now, we'll get this one built up and we'll uh, have a quick little go on it because we've, we've got a demo doing of it later on. We'll do a pickup demo of it or it might go on Vintage Week. But um, yeah, it's such a nice machine. Uh, As you can see, this vacuum's turned out really nice in the end. Um, with the uh, with the curse vacuum had very little uh, parts at all. The bag, parts of the brush roll and the clip really, I'd say. Um, I've just washed a few of the parts up in the dishwasher as well, just to keep up the spares, um, like the wheels and stuff, because they were quite nice condition. Um, like you say, this one was was a, a 1982, I'll get it right, the 1982. Um, shaking vac vacuum and we have also um when i did the actual um running in Who's yesterday toilet? oh yeah when when we, when we did the um the christening of the vacuum and got it running because obviously i had to double check everything being a quite paranoid with this one we did um use a a very little bit of shaking back just to christen it just to get it so it's got that nice fragrance in the uh, room but we didn't obviously do a full clean with the shaking mat we just you know just to see if it sucked up so yeah it runs really nice um we'll just switch this one on cole give this one a quick push around the room and uh the bags turned up really nice as well i only soak up to here um, i don't soak these badges at all if i can help it Go on then. You can see it in the background, the sugar vac for see that? No, yeah, you go. It's right there. No, it is that. So that's see. from the 1982, yeah, so there it is in, um, in action. So Carl's just going to, um, we're just going to switch this one on now. Um, it has got a quite a strange way how it switches on because originally the US ones of the time had the, the top, the switches up here. Like the Decade 80, the Decade 80 is a far superior machine. This one has got plastic fan on it, plastic chassis. As you can see, the motor wasn't as good. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, so it runs all right really, considering that, you know, it's, it is the cheapest one. And it was one of the last Hoover Seniors really, because they started phasing them out. They had the Power Plus, right after and they had the dirt cut model as well trying to get people to buy it but i don't think it really sold that well so uh yeah let's get this one pushed um a quick go no what we got here shim shaking man carl's just going to demonstrate how you uh switch the machine on oh you're dying to use that just have a little bit then yeah a little bit not recommended for for modern machines and mind you that's about new machine. Yeah, not not recommended for modern machines. And we've got two more bottles of that. Yeah, we have. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that for Dysons and things like that because the filters clog on them. All right for these old ones with the bags on them. No, beat. This is what my new friend is on for. So what we'll do now, we'll just demonstrate the on and off switch on this one because it's a. Uh, I don't know. I think. Well, I don't know. I, I don't really like this this style of on and off switch, but. You got it on the, I think, no, you got it on the bag, this one. Yeah, we'll nip it down to two. You got it on the bag, this one, or not? Yeah, well. And the bag, this one's got shits on the bag. Yeah, it's got, yeah. So what you do then, just to demonstrate, you click it down, and then that's it. <laughs> Um, it's got a 
really good set of restraints on this one. That's a top fill one as well, isn't it? So there it is, really. It does got a nice smell to it, and if you have a look in here, I'll just show you which um, bag. Chicken bags got baking soda in there. Yeah, some of them have, yeah, but we don't, we don't really use it like that. This, I think, like you say, this has got a. This one. Remember, Sam put baking soda in the chicken bag. They did, didn't they? Yeah, the same. Yeah, because Orin and Hammond, Orin and Hammond. The Same year, bit newer one than. So, I'm doing cylinder machines. So, this bag here is actually one of these um, four home turbo power bags. And, past and they do the fit really well in there. Um, so, it's a HEPA fleecy bag, increases the performance uh, of the vacuum. The shaking bag's in there. And the shaking bag's in there. Um, it should also have a. And I think it's come out, but you could we could just probably put that back in there again. So, it should go back in there. It's just a holder. Um, you know so um yeah this one's turned out really nice um thank you very much for watching Chicken and see you on the next one and um, bye for now and please subscribe to vacuum man 8 and thank you very much for watching oopsie and um, yeah go on then do one more uh, uh, oh, we'll have to do the backup then so thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one and bye for now and please subscribe to vacuum man 8 Thank you very much for watching. Would you say no, Kyle? Bye. Thank you. Bye.